branch. Let's get straight to the point. A couple of years back, you won two Arnold Classics. Then results didn't go so well. The thought was that maybe you couldn't return to those days. Um, you're taking too much out of yourself. You know, a warrior in the gym and, and, and too many battles fought. And then the Olympia came back and reinvented itself. Tell me how you did that physically and mentally. Well, I mean, you said I have faith, you know, uh, faith in my Lord and Savior. That gives me the strength to uh, overcome the things I've overcome. Yeah. Um, as far as writing me off, you know, they've been writing me off for 20 years. Um, you know, I had one bad year and uh, had a bad place at the Olympia, you know, previous Olympia, and uh, came back to the Arnold and didn't, uh, didn't place how I wanted to. And, um, you know, at that point, I just went back and uh, went back to the drawing board, went back to things I knew. And, um, you know, your body changes. You know, I'll be 40 in a couple months. So, uh, you know, I was doing the things I'd always done, and I wasn't getting the results I'd always gotten. So, uh, you know, I had to make a few adjustments with my nutrition. And, uh, you know, we got won the Europa, but I still wasn't where I wanted to be. And, you know, by the time I got to Olympia, I, like you said, I reinvented myself and got back to in the top group. A true test for a man's character is not how he reacts in victory, but how he reacts in defeat, you know. And um, so after the Olympia and uh, the Arnold, you know, what are you going to do? Are you going to just give up? And uh, are you going to reach down deep inside and pull something out of you? And, maybe you've reached down farther than you ever had before and make it happen, so. So, I mean, you've got a history of fighting back. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, on the morning of the Olympia, did you know you were on? You, you, you were gonna surprise people? I knew two weeks before the Olympia I was on. Um, two weeks out, I looked pretty much like I did at the Olympia, yeah. minus a few pounds of water. So, uh, anytime I was my best, you know, my Arnold wins, uh, you know, the nine and the 10 the Olympia, two weeks out, I was ready. So, um, at that point, you know, I stopped doing cardio, eased up on the training a little bit, and. Um, actually ate up all the way through the show. And I went in no stress and I, I knew when I went and got up that morning, on Friday morning, you know, pre-judging this Friday night, I was like, I told my wife, I was like, it's gonna be good. I don't know where it's gonna, where I'm gonna be, but it's gonna be good. So going into 2015, you're definitely going to the Arnold Classic. What improvements can you make between, say, the Olympia? It will be anything different, but what are you looking for? Um, at this point, you know, I don't, I got all the mass I need. Uh, you know, I pretty much at the Olympia, I did everything I wanted to do. I brought my, you know, my legs up. Well, they got symmetries back in my legs. They both match. Uh, you know, I continue to work on my back. Back could always use a little more separation and detail. And uh, main most important thing for me is to nail my conditioning. If I have 100% conditioning, I'll be battling for the top spot. And I think one of the most remarkable things about you, I mean, you worry your spirit in the gym and everything. But you, 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 you have a full-time job, your own business. You probably work, what, 40, 60 hours a week? Yeah, I've always uh, always worked. I don't know. Uh, I'm not one of those guys that can just sit around. If I sit around, I'd be divorced, and yeah. it'd just be a bad thing. So uh, I drive myself and everyone else around me crazy. Uh, you know, I'm not one of those guys that goes to the gym, trains, and then comes back and watches Sports Center and plays video games. Yeah. So uh, I, live, live, I live a pretty active life, and um, um, I like to work. I like to be busy. And, you know, bodybuilding, for all you young guys out there that dream of being here, man, I encourage you to pursue and chase your dreams, but you know, get education, get a job, start your own business, because there's only about 10 guys in the world that do really good at this. Yeah. And uh, if you look at how many tens of thousands of bodybuilders are in the world, sure. chances aren't too good you're gonna make it. Right. And your wife, Trish, who competes, she's the same mindset, and, and you, you, you've got a little girl now. Yes. Yeah, how, how has that changed your family, man? You know, having a little girl is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Uh, you know, when we got married, I didn't even know if I wanted kids. You know, uh, my career was taking off. Uh, I was traveling, everything was going really good. We we're working, and back then I had a, we, had, we just started our freight company and I had a gym also. Yeah. And so, man, we had, I had no time for anything. And we finally had a kid and a little girl. And uh, it's the best things that ever happened to me. Being a bodybuilder, you're pretty, you're gonna be a self-centered person. You know, pretty, it's always, you think about yourself first because it's the nature of our sport, you know, the, it's all about you, your training, your dieting, your tanning, your posing, your rest. And so it's you, 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 me, me, me. And so when you have a child, it makes you think about some, I think about someone else before I think about myself. And that's a good thing. So um, it gives you, it puts things in perspective. Things I used to think were important, aren't so important to me anymore. You know, when you have a family, then you realize what, what's really important in life. And the fact that you're on the latest uh, cover of MD really underlines the fact that you're back if you ever went away. Tell me about being on the cover. You know, I, I don't know how many covers I've had, probably 15 covers, maybe with MD over the years. And uh, it's been uh, over a year since I'd had a cover. And, you know, I, I came back and I was very happy with my package I brought to the Olympia stage. And uh, Steve, uh, about three or four weeks before it hit the newsstand, 
Steve sent me a picture of the cover and said congratulations and uh, I was like very cool you know it's, that, that was kind of the icing on the cake you know like let everybody know that hey I am back and uh, I'm gonna stay back for a while. So we're at the Nationals here you, you won your pro card in 2001 won the heavyweight division what's your recollection of that what's the main memory looking back to that day. We well, you know 2001 me and my workout partner Johnny Jackson we saw we trained together for that show that's the first time we trained together yeah. and uh, I won the heavyweight class he won the light heavyweights and he won, won the overall we both got our pro cards the same night and I remember winning the went in and I was on stage and then that's my name at first and uh, it seems surreal because you know time I was a teenager I knew I wanted to be a pro bodybuilder yeah. and uh, I walked backstage and I remember I just sat down and I just remember man everything's gonna change you know I finally I'd set this goal so many years ahead of time and I was 26 years old at the time and I finally turned pro and I was like now I can actually I have the opportunity to live my dream yeah. and um, you know I, I by no means thought it was people were just gonna start throwing contracts and yeah. you know bless me with all this good fortune I knew I was going to work probably harder than I ever worked yeah. and I did but um, I knew at that point I just separated separate myself from everyone else yeah. you know I became a professional and um, yeah. now I had the opportunity to live my life as a pro and chase my dream and tell me the story about before you and Johnny trained together you were in Metroflex together and this tell us that story the way you've told me it before well um, I've known Johnny I knew him but before we started training together you know we never trained together but we trained at the same gym and uh, you know we'd be training and uh, you know like we'd be squatting I'd be in one rack he'd be in another and um, I put a plate on he put another plate on and uh, we never would say anything to each other and uh, you know I was counting his reps and I know he was probably doing the same for me and so I'd make sure I'd do more than he did and uh, then I put another plate on then he put another plate on to stay ahead of me and uh, so this went on for a long time and we had a mutual friend and he said hey man why don't you guys train together you know it'll be good and I was like yeah I'm cool with that and I guess he said something to Johnny and then we talked and we started training and I said man you're doing the nationals he said yeah and I said man let's train for it and he's like let's do it and uh, that was 14 years ago. So you've trained all together all that way through 40. That's quite remarkable. It is. And I think we're only, probably, I know we're the only top level pros that train together. Yeah. And uh, people say, well, how do you compete against each other and stay friends? And, you know, you, when we're on stage, we're going to fight to the fight to the death. You know, best man to the last man standing. But when we walk off stage, we leave all that on the stage. And, uh, you know, if, uh, if I'm not in the contest, I'm pulling for him to win. You, you won in 2001, but you didn't make your pro debut until what 2003 or yeah. You, you took a long-term strategy to it. Was that because of your business? T tell me the reason behind that. Well, leading up to the 2001 national victory, um, I read an article with Rich Gaspari, and uh, he didn't train his legs for like almost a year getting when, when he won his pro card. Yeah. And uh, I was very bottom heavy. I knew I needed to bring my body up to match my legs. So um, I adopted the same strategy. I, uh, I didn't train legs for nine months before the nationals. Uh, I lost a little fullness, but I really didn't lose any size, but it gave my upper body a chance to grow. Um, I'd done the USA the year previous and I weighed in at 202. I did the nationals at 220. I gained 18 pounds almost exclusively in my upper body and I won, got my pro card. Um, once I turned pro, I realized that I still wasn't where I needed to be, that I felt confident to compete. You know, I didn't, didn't want to just go to a show and compete. I want to be competitive and be able to you know fight for the first place and uh, Johnny jumped right in did real well qualified for the Olympia and um, I took some time off I turned pro November of 2001 and it wasn't until I think the spring of 2003 that I I did the new last the last night of champions was my first show and uh, I went in and I got eighth place in my first show and I out of like 50 I think about 50 competitors and I remember thinking I wasn't happy with eighth place but I was like all right I'll just be 42 pros I, I maybe can do this and so I went back to the following uh, show was a 2000 was a GNC yeah. show of strength. I got fourth, yeah. and then the next two shows I won. Yeah. And uh, so I think my strategy paid off. I, I brought my body up, my shoulders and arms and everything to match the wheels, and uh, they rewarded me. So, during your career, what would you isolate as the lowest point, career-wise, competitive-wise? Uh, I'll say my quad tear. You know, in 2011, I was about four weeks from the Mr. Olympia. Mm -hmm. I just won my first Arnold Classic early in the year. And I was in awesome shape, and I knew I was on track to be, you know, my potentially my best ever, yeah. you know, conditioning. And uh, I was, you know, probably going to equal or surpass my 2009 conditioning at the Olympia. And um, you know, I slipped and uh, slipped in a parking lot, tore my quad off the bone. And uh, I remember laying there in, in the parking lot, and my quad rolled up. I couldn't get up, thinking, "Is this it? Yeah. The career may be. Yeah. This may be it." Yeah. And uh, 
I went home and I had surgery a day later. I had to reattest, and um, I remember sitting on the couch after surgery. I got home and thinking, you know what? Did a lot of soul searching. I was like, what am I going to do? And um, then I started getting mad. And uh, when I get, when I say get mad, I just got mad because I was like, you know, I'm not going out like this. I'm not going to let this beat me. And um, the Wednesday after I had surgery on a Monday, that Wednesday I was sitting on the couch and I told my wife, I said, hey, I'm going to do the Arnold. And this is first part of September. You know, I had six months to do this. And Trish is real black and white. She's like, all right. And I remember she went in the kitchen and started cooking my food. She goes, we're going to do the, she goes, we're gonna do the Arnold. You guys start eating. And uh, so I started eating and uh, I had to learn how to walk again. Then I rehabbed it. And uh, then I had to start training after I did all that. And I managed to come back and uh, get a second Arnold victory. So it, the lowest point in my career turned out to be the highest point of my career. Um, I think that victory meant more to me than anything because I went from thinking my career was over possibly to overcoming it and the amount of self-confidence I gained. I was like, if I can overcome this, then I can overcome anything. And, and your two Arnold victories, compare that to second in the Olympia. Which was the, which would be the peak moment be between all those three contests? Uh, which would be the peak moment? I would say uh, my first Arnold victory, because that, that was a goal I set for myself when I was 18 years old. Yeah. And I want to win Arnold Classic. So, uh, you know, I won that, and uh, I tried so many times. It was my sixth try, and uh, I pulled it off and got the victory. And I worked, and I worked so hard to win that competition. And you know, I finally won it, and I got a standing ovation. And that was a, a shining moment. My second place at the Olympia. Uh, that's like the, that's second place in the Mr. Olympia is the most bittersweet place there is in the whole sport. Um, any bodybuilder who's ever competed dreams of being a Mr. Olympia and being the last two people on stage and waiting for that that final call and. Uh, Second place is a great achievement, but you're one place short of the ultimate ultimate goal. So it's a it's real it's bittersweet. So just we're coming to the end now. Just tell me what bodybuilding means to you. It's obviously changed your life, but you have a life outside bodybuilding. But what does it really mean to you? And how what does it drive you on? Even though you you independently wealthy, you you, you don't take the money, but you, you you wouldn't be in the street if you didn't have your bodybuilding. Um, you know, I would have, everything I have, I would have bodybuilding. Um, I wouldn't be the person I am today uh, without it. You know, it, it, it taught me self-discipline, uh, work ethic. You know, and it taught me, uh, gave me, it taught me that, it's, you know, in life, no one owes you any, anything. No one's going to give you a damn thing either. And so, if you know, you, but if you work hard, you can have anything you want. And that's what bodybuilding taught me. Um, you know, you can have anything you want if you're willing to work and put the price, pay the price and stay the course. And that's what it taught me, if you know, you know, when I started competing, they, they told me I'd never win a show. And uh, they told me you'd never be pro. And I turned pro, and they said, well, you'll never win a pro show or never, surely never win a Arnold Classic, and I did. And uh, just because I was willing to pay the price. Well, thanks, Branch. Thanks for your time. And thanks for being such an inspiration to, to everybody and respected by everybody. You're a real genuine guy. Thanks for your time. Thank you.